Greetings, opera lovers. Live from Pittsburgh, it's Rona. Yesterday was the live transmission from the Mets production of Turandot, starring Nina Stemma as Turandot. The rest of the cast we'll get to later. But before I get to reviewing it, I have something to say about the value of hearing an opera live versus your other possibilities, hearing them over the radio with earphones or going to your local theater to see a live transmission. So before we actually get to Turandot, I would like to speak about something I heard two years ago at the Met, Werther, starring Jonas Kaufmann and Sophie Koch. I was able to listen to the Prima, the first night of the opera, on Sirius Radio. Then I went to a live performance and I sat in either row O or P because that year I sat in only rows O and P for the operas I attended. Then there was the HD transmission, which I was not able to make, but I listened again on the radio, but with my earphones, so I listened to it through Sirius. Then I was able to catch the HD Encore production. So here are my thoughts in general. It's always best to hear a singer in the house, but if you have to make a second choice, mine would be with earphones or earbuds. And that is because of something I've noticed over the years from the Mets live transmissions to your local theaters. And that is that the sound is not even close to ideal. Did you ever notice that when the, uh, when the, the stream starts coming, there's an introduction and they play, they play live recorded music, an overture or compilations from other things coming up or in the past. The sound is crisp. Then when the actual opera comes on, the sound just doesn't sound true for the singers. Even the orchestra sounds compromised. So of the three ways to hear an opera, I would say that the live transmissions give you the poorest uh, actualization. A couple of years ago, the reviewer from the New York Times, Zachary Wolf, went to, I believe, every single performance that the Met did of Norma. And he sat in different places at the Met. And you should all look it up and see what he said. People say, oh, I heard so-and-so live and he didn't sound so big or she she sounded really big and everybody else said she sounded small. Well, you know what? It depends on where you sit. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, I will confess that I did not go to the HD production, but I listened on Sirius Radio to the performance. Why did I do that? Well, for two reasons. First, I've seen this production twice. Now, that doesn't mean that I wouldn't want to see it again, but my biggest interest was hearing the soprano Nina Stemma, who I have not heard live, and I really wish I could. From what I've heard of her on recorded venues, I think she's an excellent singer. She is one of the leading dramatic sopranos of our day. She has a great reputation with the big Strauss operas, with Isolde, many other uh, roles that require that dramatic sound. And while I've heard her, I've never really understood why people love her so much. I have many friends who go to a lot of operas who've heard her many times, and they all have the highest praise for her. And I just needed to hear her in the best way I could so I could make up my own mind. Not like any of you should care what I think, but here goes. What I heard on the radio confirmed what I heard other times. It is an, a wonderful instrument. She's an outstanding singer, an excellent musician. I just don't love her voice. Is that, is that her fault? No. For all I know, there are people out there who think she's the best thing since Leontine Price, Birgit Nielsen, uh, Flagstad, anybody. But to me, 
it's very serviceable and it sounds big. Now, sounding big and being big are two different things. In general, the people I've thought who have really big voices, when I've heard them live, had really big voices. The only person I thought had a big voice, and when I heard him live the first time, did not, was Dmitry Vorosovsky. I'm not going to say it's a small voice, because it's not. But... Hearing him in live in recordings or on YouTube, I thought it was much fuller. Okay, enough about all of that. Back to Turandot. So the Met presented <clears throat> a cast that on paper looked wonderful. I've heard of uh, the tenor Marco Berti a few times before and did not care for him. And I have to say that if the Met thinks that this is acceptable for its ticket holders, they are wrong. They just are wrong. They should ask me first, is he acceptable? No. That is because the Met should represent the highest standards of opera presentations that are available. If you cannot find a better Kalaf, don't do Turandot. My... Um, my disappointment with Bertie should not be against him. It should be against the Met. They hired him. He is not suitable for that role, in my opinion. I'm sure there were many people who were thrilled to hear him. He does have what a lot of people would call squillo. He has that, uh, that, uh, that sort of piercing quality when he gets to the high, higher part of his voice. Yes, he had that. But in general, I found his voice extremely unpleasant. I did not like the way he produced his voice. But those aren't his issues. Those are the Met's issues. And please, Met person who hired him, Peter Gelb or anybody else, I can tell you that those of us who know just a little bit know that this is not what we should be hearing. Okay, enough. I hate to say negative things, especially about singers, because as all of you know, I try to cheer them on. It's a hard job. But getting to the most positive aspect of the production was hearing Anita Hartig sing the role of Liu. She was just phenomenal. What a beautiful voice. What beautiful renditions she had of her two signature arias. It was, I mean, there were no other words, just beautiful. She's a Romanian soprano, and as I've had this discussion before, Romanian sopranos, I think, have a little something special in their genes, in their DNA. There's a warmth and um, a vulnerability about them. Okay, maybe I made it up. But that's what I hear. And don't ask me in a blind test who's Romanian and who isn't. I knew she was Romanian, and she reminded me of one of my favorite Romanian sopranos, Eliana Kotrubash, and another one who I've heard and I adore is Angela Gheorghiu. Okay, I know she's not everybody's favorite, and right now she's a very controversial singer. Enough of that. Getting back to Turandot, it's so hard to stay on task. Nina Stemma. The reason I wanted to hear this, to hear the opera, was to hear her. Of course, we all know she comes out in Act Two. Act One is Stemmaless, Torrentless, and she comes out to sing this enormous aria. It is the test of all tests in Questa Regia. How did she do? Well, when she started off, it was exactly what I thought. Not a voice that appeals to me but she sang it very well. As she sang through the opera, her voice warmed up. But it's just not a voice that appeals to me. Then there was someone new in the opera, and I'm gonna have to read his name. He played Timur, Kalaf's father, Alexander Tsimbliuk, or something like that. I would like to hear more of him. I thought he was just fabulous. I'd like to make 
to mention something about the conductor. Actually, it should be against the law for me to mention anything about a conductor of Turandot because I have never actually opened up the full score of Turandot and studied it. And those are the only people who should really be able to make a comment about the conductor. But as I know, many people who make many comments about the conductors who don't even read music, I'll just join the fray. I didn't think it was especially noteworthy. There was nothing um, outstanding about the conducting. But I would like to point out that the chorus sounded its usual spectacular self. There's another note I'd like to make about the opera performance yesterday. I didn't know this until I listened to one of the um, intermission features. I believe they said there were 91 musicians in the pit. That's a lot in that pit. It's a lot anywhere. And the orchestra seemed to play very well. There were all those exotic instruments. There's another little point I'd like to make about Turandot. Not that, anybody, not that anybody should really care, but I find the whole episode of Ping Pang and Pong so frustrating. I want the opera to move on. And no matter how good the singers are or how clever the staging is, it just is like another opera in the opera. Pittsburgh Opera, as you know, which is the largest of the local operas here in Pittsburgh, put on a production a few years ago, and they did a really good job of Ping Pang and Pong. I know, that, because I've already seen it, and I know that the Met does Ping Pang and Pong and then has three uh, dancers uh, portray their characters uh, for more of the uh, Commedia dell'arte interactive stuff. And that's a way to do it. But here in Pittsburgh, which is just a local company, they did an excellent job of giving them very well choreographed things to do, which they did very well. Okay, so now you have my rants about the HD performances and about um, the hiring of Mr. Bertie, what I thought of Miss Stemma. I am looking forward to hearing a few more operas this season and hoping that next season I get to the Met. I didn't get there last year and I'm not going to get there this year. But coming up soon is going to be the Rake's Progress in Pittsburgh where I have invited several of my online friends to join me in a shared opera experience. You'll hear all about that later. Thank you all for listening and have a wonderful day.